They're trying to shut me up. They've made me food and I'm trying to talk. Yeah, I've already taken a bite. Okay, if I don't say this now, they're not gonna let me say it later. I'm gonna need to say this now. I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible because we keep fighting for the front and we're spinning. Um, we're spinning b between the part of us that wants to talk about the emotional abuse and the part of us that wants to shut it down. We definitely have somebody in this system that likes to eat as a form of coping because it's become really stressful and we're eating way earlier than we normally eat. So I'm going to read to you what we wrote this morning because I can't stay focused long enough to tell you from the same passion that I was at, but maybe when I start reading, I will. All right, just to kind of give you a recap, my um, neurologic, neuropsychological test has come back. The results, the evaluation has come back. She sent me a PDF early and I got to review it. So I replied to her with this message and I'll go into more as you hear this message that I emailed to her. I have an appointment with her at 1030, so um, she can go over it with me. All right, here's what I said to her. I said, thank you for sending this to me early. It gave me a chance to sit with it and let it sink into every part of me. I'll try to keep this short, but if you need to be late to our appointment so that you can have a chance to read this, please do so. I don't know where else to turn. Oh, and before I forget, the tester told me she emailed or texted you about the person you recommended for therapy. I don't know if you would have her contact information for me. Wanted to mention this before I forget. Okay, I'm just going to share a couple of things with you because I fear I won't be able to say any of this when we meet. There are parts of me that disagree with much of what you said but I know you might write that off as distrusting slash paranoid. So instead of questioning the results of your evaluation, I will most likely remain quiet when we talk today at 1030. If I get the guts to ask you any questions, I hope you will be open to them. But I've seen enough psychiatrists, psychologists, and therapists to know that I am not the expert. Therefore, no one will truly hear me. No one will, no one is willing to hear every part of me just the ones their tests are looking for. In preparation for our meeting, I have attempted to do my own research on what I mean. I can find hundreds of articles that talk about the things I'm experiencing, but can't link it to any personality disorders. And then I come upon nami.org, N-A-M-I.org, and I felt defeated right away. Here is my inquiry to them. I only share this with you as my last cry for help. And I put that in quotations because on her, on her evaluation, she put cry for help. Okay, it says my letter to NAMI.org. Here's what I wrote to them. It says, I tried searching your website for the word domestic violence. Nothing came up. So I tried again with just the word domestic, still nothing. I am about an hour away from speaking to the neuropsychologist, neuropsychologist about the results of my extensive testing. She gave me a copy so I can review it ahead of time and get my questions prepared. I told her and her team about the domestic violence I experience almost daily. And when I say violence, I mean the hostility is so thick I wouldn't dare be myself. Otherwise, I know there will be violence. So yeah, the violence is not so clear cut. It makes the crazy making type of domestic abuse. She gave me an M 
MBI test a couple of weeks ago and it states that I'm over reporting and this is most likely a cry for help. And she would be right. I have been crying for help since I met this man I'm married to, but I can't leave him. Stockholm syndrome, anyone? I did, I did not have this much distress in my adult years before I met my husband, but after he hit me in 2010, combined with 10 plus years of psychological, sexual, financial, and emotional abuse, I started slipping into a DPDR state almost always, always being as obedient as possible, fawning left and right to prevent any more unwanted behaviors from him. I would have pockets of awareness and I would go to the doctors and therapists and they all blamed me and my brain for what I was experiencing. They gaslit my theory that the domestic abuse was causing my mental health to deteriorate. As I read her report last night, there is not a single mention of the fear I have if I don't comply to my husband. Why is there no mention of this? I guess it's showing up as paranoia personality disorder. This can't be right. Isn't domestic abuse linked to having long lasting psychological, a long lasting psychological effect? I have no sense of self, only fragments, only sometimes linked. My recollection between fights and arguments is unnatural. I am unable to do anything at home in the environment that I dissociate in. At work, I am like a whole new person, thinking clearly, doing excellent work. I am the top employee. I have respect and a good reputation. I am not paranoid of people at work, in public. I trust doctors and mental health professionals to help me, but they don't. I believe I lack the ability to communicate all of this effectively because I'm usually always disassociating and blaming my own brain for misunderstanding my husband. But when I am clear-headed, I am aware of the abuse, the mistreatment, and the fear of what to do next forces me back into a desensitized state of reality. Basically, the reason why I'm contacting NAMI.org is my diagnosis on this PDF is unclear. I was reading more on your website. She mentions cluster A and B personality disorders, paranoia, and borderline most likely based on how, do you how she describes my symptoms, but I'd really love to know more about misdiagnosed personality disorders in a domestic violence setting. What if I am not paranoid with pockets of fear of my husband, as her report suggests? But what if I only have pockets of awareness? All of my family would agree that I am the most trusting, gullible, highly susceptible person they know. I trust too easily. How can I be a paranoid diagnosis? How can this be a paranoia diagnosis if I'm not observed across all settings? Furthermore, if someone is in an abusive relationship and made to think they are crazy, wouldn't there be pockets of people? BPD episodes when they are trying to save their sanity. I'm not the only one that can see how toxic my husband is to me. Stop. <clears throat> and I'm fucking where I left off. I'm trying so hard to stay here and it's like I'm really regretting writing this right now which tells me somebody is trying to come forward and and retract what I said. I am not the only one that can see how toxic my husband is to me, but I can't get the whole of me to agree. I feel split apart from different awarenesses of it and can't stay focused on one awareness for any length of period. The dissociation is too severe. This letter, for example, has taken me three hours to write. He hit me twice in 2010 after standing up to his obsessive jealousy and intense anger. I stopped standing up to him and I've been spiraling into what feels like psychosis or an identity crisis ever since. I've been in talk therapy since 2006 because he thinks I'm crazy, unstable, inconsistent, unreliable. I have two small kids and I would never want to leave. So I have been going to therapy most consistently for the last three years to get a handle on the suicidal ideation at the very least. Trying to convince all parts of me that my husband is not the bad guy. I am, but I'm not the bad guy. Why doesn't anyone see this? If I mention the different parts of me that I call out by color, I am written off and not taken seriously. Yes, I am crying out for help because when I remain calm about it, I can't get any serious help. Nobody is listening. Please put something on your website about domestic violence and mental health. Isn't there a correlation? Thank you. And then I wrote, that's what I wrote to Nami, and then I ended my letter to her, and I said, I'm starting to get fuzzy. I won't be able to proofread. I hope to get 
I hope to be back at 1030, but you will most likely get agreeable crystal instead of me. That's just been our pattern. We're too fearful to question anyone's authority. We are too fearful to speak our truth, crystal. And I want to cry. I have that, that, that victim blue one really close by that wants to cry because she understands what I'm trying to say and she agrees with what I'm trying to say. But then she also agrees with the other side because they say that we're just crazy and stuff and that we're, we're, we're the ones that are messed up. So I'm trying to stay as focused as possible on who, who I am and what I am and what this is all about. And basically you might get several videos from us today because I haven't even read to you what the the evaluation said, but this is what this is what I wrote to her this morning, and I'm gonna see her in a half an hour, and my whole body is trying to stop me from saying these things out loud, and they're mad at me for sending this to her. She she also said something in there in the evaluation that it's not dissociative identity disorder, which I think is bogus because she didn't even ask me any dissociative questions. She didn't ask me any identity questions. None of their testing eluded to any of those to rule it out or to include it in. So how can you, how can you rule it out if you didn't test to rule it out or to rule it in? You didn't ask any sort of skills whatsoever about identity. And, 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 and all the letters that I wrote to the first doctor, they didn't even mention those letters. They didn't mention how different they were from each other or how they have, I have different states of opinions or anything. So I just, I want to, I want to write her off as someone that's not going to help us. But at the same time, I fear that I'm being shoved to the corner and told not to, told not, told, told not to speak. Okay, we're done. I'll go. I think I'm addicted to my camera. I'm addicted to to using my camera as a way to feel better. She hasn't called me yet, and my stomach's in knots, and my heart is racing fast, and my throat is closed up, and my heart is like sunk in. She's, she's reading my letter right now as my guess because I told her to take her time on calling me if she needs time to read it. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't want to go to my husband. He stayed home from work today for some reason, which really messes me up. Anyway, I'm trying not to put all my eggs in her basket. I'm trying not to give away my power like that. She doesn't, she doesn't get to tell me my experience. I tell her my experience and she gets to evaluate it. And if she doesn't understand what things to look for when she's evaluating, then she's the quack. She's the, she's the idiot doctor that thinks she knows everything. And she's just one of a hundred or a thousand or a million. There's a million quacks out there that think they know everything, right? And I go to her for help and She's not interested in helping me, that's fine. We don't we don't need her. We can move on to somebody else that wants to help us. And what do we want help with? We want to feel more consistent. We want the co cognitive dissonance to go away. We don't want it to be such a great gap. There's such a great divide in our brain. There's such a great divide in the headspace. And we want to feel consistent and we want to feel normal. <laughs> little more normal why why do i keep going well we need meds then no 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 because because then that just further separates us it's like making everybody stay on their side of the lake and if everyone stays on their side of the lake what happens when something splashes right in front of us then we're back to cognitive dissonance just just we're not consistent in anything we do Oh, my stomach hurts so bad. Okay, we're waiting for her call. We're gonna breathe.
We're gonna breathe. Maroon, let's call you out. Let's call you out, Maroon. She doesn't want to be told she's wrong. Okay, well, worst case scenario, she tells us we're wrong. Let's practice radical acceptance and not worry about what she thinks. Red doesn't want to tell her about our obsessive compulses, our compulses. We were labeled obsessive compulsive on some small degree last year because that's all they could see I guess I don't know how they saw that but this year they didn't mention it at all on this testing Peach just wants to get better so we could do better for our kids Orange is tired of all the anxiety and all the chaos in the brain Gold doesn't like the personality disorder because she feels like we've done nothing but obey and do a good job and fawn. We we're supposed to fawn. So if we did everything we were supposed to do, why do we get to have the personality disorder? Yellow thinks we can do this without the help of doctors and therapists. Lime thinks we're crazy and that we need help. Throw this one out there too, okay? Because there's a point where, and I do it myself, and that's why I know this, okay? Is you know that it's not that it's not right and it's wrong, but don't railroad it the other way too, where you have to be right. No, I have to be right. I'm asking for help. No, no, that's not what I'm... Okay. When you're trying to get your, you know, bring up your valid situations and stuff like that, and stuff, keep, try to keep an open mind with, maybe there's some truth to what she's saying, and there's truth to what you say. She's calling me right now. All right. You got this, baby. Okay. Love you. The purpose of feedback is not really to go over your um, your feedback. It's for me to go over testing. So I'll I'll just really make it brief there because there isn't really a lot to comment on because your testing was basically the same as last year. Um, your neuropsychological testing. Uh, really followed the same kind of pattern of performance as before and the psychological testing too. Um, the only thing that was different, and I'm glad that we did, is add on another test to assess um, the severity of PTSD symptoms. So it actually does make more sense to me now this year than last year because with trauma, with PTSD, it is not uncommon to have depersonalization and derealization. Those are actually symptoms of PTSD. So I really think the combination of the PTSD and the personality disorder mixed in with very, very severe depression and anxiety is what is causing the depersonalization and the derealization. Um, I've read your emails, I've looked at the emails that you have sent to Dr. Fitzgerald and what you have sent to me, and frankly, what you're describing is not, um, it, it's not characteristic of dissociative identity. Yeah, it's just, I'm not seeing. It's because it's not distinct and it's not, the same as OSDD 1A. It's Say that again. I couldn't quite hear what you said. OSDD 1A is not distinct and it's not exactly the same as DID. It's not exactly going to 
have all the components. That's why that they have that there, right? The OSDD one A. I'm just trying you're, to understand. You're so garbled up. Can you repeat that? I'm um. I'm not really sure what to say. You're not what? I'm not sure what to say. Okay, I just wanted you to repeat what you said because I couldn't understand it. Isn't the isn't if you don't meet all the criteria of DID, the OSDD one A is the non distinct but the highly dissociative amnesia and I don't always you, you don't Crystal, you don't have that. I, I'm not really sure what what you're trying to achieve by trying to convince providers that you have dissociative identity disorder. I don't think I have dissociative identity disorder. I just have a lot of different thoughts that disagree with each other, and I don't always remember in between the thoughts. Yeah, so that's a personality disorder. That's what that is. Which personality disorder is it? It's a combination of cluster A and cluster B. It's mixed. And, and the then features of both of those. Last year, you also mentioned obsessive compulsive. Isn't that cluster C? That is, but um, I'm not. I'm not really seeing that as being significant, like the cluster A and cluster B. The cluster A and cluster B are like schizotypal characteristics. It's some paranoia. It's suspiciousness. It's difficulty trusting people. But I don't have a difficulty trusting people. I trust too much. I trust too easily. I don't know what answers or what things that I tr don't trust people. Oh, well, your personality inventory is reflecting that. Because I was looking at my personality testing compared from this year to last year, and last year I was highly fearful of my husband, and this year I've become stronger and I'm not so fearful of him, so I'm not... Uh, in in my mind, I'm just trying to make sense of why I can't seem to get all the different parts of me to agree with each other. So I don't think it's DID, but I don't know what it is. I don't know why I can't seem to be consistent. Well, so. my opinion is, and you you wanted my opinion, that's why you came in for another evaluation. My opinion is that you have very severe PTSD and you have very severe personality disorder and you have very severe depression and anxiety and I think all of those mixed together is what's causing you all of this emotional distress I don't doubt one bit you have distress every single day of your life crystal I can see the distress and I do think that really intensive therapy is what is needed. Who can give me the intensive therapy? I did check with that person I told you about that does EMDR, she's, and she's not taking new patients. Um, so I don't, I don't know. The best that I could tell you is to check with your insurance about a list of providers. But that's what's really going to be helpful for you, Chris, is, is to have a good therapist that you can stay with for a long time. Have you even seen Brian? I've only seen him since May, but I've been with Lifeline for three years. Do you think staying with Lifeline is getting a different No. I just don't know what to do anymore. Would you consider medicine again? Hello? Hi there, this is Dr. Kemper. Hi, this is Jen, her husband. Hi there. Um, I, I just asked a question of Crystal if she would consider medicine again. Okay. Is she still there? or? Uh, yeah, she just handed me the phone and said she couldn't do it right this second. Um, now, I know because she's talked to me enough on that that, you know, part of her feels like a, she's, 
she needs it, but then she has so much of her that doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that if she were to try medicine again and feel connected to a therapist, the combination of therapy and medicine would help her a lot. And I was just reviewing with her that I'm really not seeing dissociative identity what I am seeing is very severe PTSD, very severe personality disorder, and very severe depression and anxiety. And I think that all mixes together and is giving her the symptoms that she's having. Okay. With PTSD, it is common to have depersonalization and desensitization in memory loss and amnesia about certain events that are triggered. And I think that's what's happening for her. So I think that she really needs very deep and long-term therapy for the PTSD and the personality disorder and medicine for the depression and the anxiety. And I think she'll get a lot of relief with that. Okay. Now, I guess I have a question on um, sure. the depression side of things um, because I, I, I see both sides of it I see where she, she does hit the depression side of things and other times she's just not I don't want to say she's not um, but she's not depressed she gives the observation of not being depressed she's pretty happy-go-lucky, you know, um, and then kind of, I don't want to say falls back into it, but she can sometimes get out of it pretty quick, I mean, mm -hmm. is that something that, you know, is that kind of a sign of that, or? Well, it, it's not usually like that, typically people will stay quiet for a while, but, Everybody can have a little bit different variation. Okay. Um, the testing is showing pretty severe depression. Now, I know she also told me, you know, with that when she was doing the depression thing, that um, in her mindset, she was like, she goes, well, am I depressed? For the most part, no, but, you know, at you know a certain point in time yes she is and she kind of answered to the questions to you know to that side of you know her right. knowledge do you want to know what that's called sure a personality disorder okay that is the personality disorder that where her personality is very malleable. It comes and goes. It changes. It changes to the situation. Okay. It adapts to the environment. It, and she can be a chameleon. She can be pressed one moment, depending on her environment and what person is in her environment. And she can be happy the next day. That is the hallmark of a personality disorder. That is not a DID. All right. And just because I have no idea because I haven't done... I mean, I, I've done a little bit of research, you know, just from my own knowledge, but what is the true definition between the two of them? I mean... What do you mean between the two of what? Uh, the personality disorder and DID. Well, in a short term, I, I, am, I, okay. I am very, very reluctant to share more information with Crystal, or even with you for that matter, about what exactly would constitute the ID. Mm -hmm. And the reason I am reluctant to do that is I get such a feeling from Crystal that she's got some kind of motivation have that diagnosis. I understand that. 
And so I do not really want to tell her why what she's presenting with tells me she does not have the message. Because if I tell her, then she's going to change the presentation for the next time. So yep. No. No, I understand that, and I, yes, I get completely get that. But, but, but I can I can tell you that the sometimes people actually really go against the idea. And I, I, I really don't want to tell you what it is that it's telling you to do. Okay. Because then I think she's going to take that information and choose to do this. No, and I get that. I can, I can understand that because because at the same time I've wanted this wondered that too. Um, and I'm not trying to be Christian because I know she is a Christian. She is really guilty. So if you say that you don't want to be Christian, that I feel like you're guilty or you're guilty or you don't think that. Okay. No, and I, I understand that. Um, and that's kind of what I was... I mean, you said exactly the reasons why I was kind of wanting to know the difference, because... Um, I was thinking the same thing on that, um, but you know, it's like I can only do so much, you know. <laughs> so I, I completely, I completely understand on that. Um, oh yeah, it is. I mean, it it gets difficult. Um, here, let me see. Okay. Now I was trying to see if she wanted to get back on the phone, but apparently she did. Um, now, with the medication, okay, um, One of her biggest things when she was taking medication is she would come back and she was just always tired and always felt much lethargic. And that was, that's one of the big main reasons I think why she won't continue with it. Um, and Yeah, and I mean, she's had some in the past, and it was the same scenario where she would, you know, do okay for a little bit on taking medication, but but you know, she would feel lethargic, numb, like she just wasn't her. Or she was just, you know, couldn't make choices. She was just whatever anybody came up to her. Okay, yes, whatever. Um. And I guess, in a sense, kind of like a, um, the best way for me to describe it is kind of that whole Eeyore, 
you know, really blue, really slow, really, okay, whatever, you know, mentality. Um, and that's, and she just didn't like that because she didn't feel like she was controlling. She would just agree with whatever things was set out there. And I, that's the reason why, from my understanding on why she stopped wanting to take, you know, doesn't want to take medication. So. Um, okay. I... Would there be anybody that maybe you could recommend? You know... Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. She does need to feel comfortable with the person she knows, you know. Okay. All right. Um, this is there anything else on that? Okay. Alright. So, I guess with medication on that type of thing, maybe you don't have the answers to this, but is that, I mean, with that diagnosis and stuff like that, is it something that should be specifically added or, you know, gone to that? Or is it, you know, just a depression medication? Okay. All right. I was just kind of curious, uh, you know, that that way, you know, if she did decide to try to look at that again, and you know, I had just had an idea of what it should look like or possibility. Okay. I try. All right. Well, thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, that was a clusterfuck if you ever saw one. And of course you didn't see it. But if I edit the way I hope I edit, I'm going to put in tidbits of information from the recording. I know the sound quality is not that great, but I do have a way to record sound on my phone and 
you know, record the phone calls. So if you listen to what I think you just listened to, you'll understand what I'm about to talk about. Otherwise, I guess the recap is that she invalidated my DID type of symptoms, claiming that I don't have DID. And I says, I know I don't. I don't think I do either. I don't think I meet all the markers to call it DID. I think it's most like it's most closely matched to OSDD 1A. And she's like, why do you want to try to convince all these doctors or something like that? And I'm like, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to make sense of what's going on in my head. If you don't see the genuineness in that, our conversation is done. It's pretty much where my brain was so done talking to her. She was she was only further hurting us. She was only further damaging what's already going on in our head, feeling like we're already confused. You don't need to invalidate our experiences by just blatantly saying that you're so right and we are so wrong. Ask questions. Why don't you ask questions about what, why do we feel this way? Nobody bothered to ask us why. I, we had that first doctor's appointment like a month ago, I think it was, and we told him about the noodles and we can't believe we told him about the noodles and we were like, holy cow, probably sounded really crazy, but he seemed really willing to listen. It was like an hour and a half long conversation. And then afterwards the noodles started emailing him so that he could get a better understanding of us. And, and, and we had some denial noodles emailing him. We had some um, victim mind frame noodles emailing him. We had noodles that believed in DID. We had noodles that didn't. Like there was, there was like three or four emails. I think there was even a fifth email that we didn't send, but it was typed up and we chickened out and didn't send it. And they said they read them all and they said they took them all into consideration, but nowhere in that report did it mention emotional abuse. It didn't mention um, identity confusion. It actually said that she does not see a blur in identity. And it's like, bullshit, I didn't, I said I had blur in identity. I don't know why she just really did not. Okay, I guess I didn't tell you about the results, so. I guess according to her testing, which I think is completely flawed and not at all encompassing or thorough. And I didn't think so last year either, so I don't know why I went back there. I guess I was just desperate. So I have noodles that put a lot of stock into what she said, and me, I don't put any stock into what she said, which is why I think I'm able to talk about it now, because they were unable to talk about it. But basically it says something about cluster A and B personality disorder. It also said something about, about bipolar symptoms. It said something about um, I'd have to read it, I guess. It also said something about, it, it agreed about the dissociative stuff. It agreed about the, um, she called it PTSD. She didn't call it complex PTSD. She called it PTSD. And she also called it major depressive disorder. And she said that I should be, I'm highly susceptible to a suicide attempt so I should be I should have a suicide plan in place like a suicide plan I think that's what it's called she also said I need intensive EMDR is what she recommends and she agrees that I'm probably struggling every single day so she did validate a few things that were coming up for us but to flat out say it's not dissociative identity disorder I don't know why you are trying so hard it's like i'm not trying so hard i'm just trying to make sense of it why don't you validate what i'm experiencing for just a flipping second and then i watched dr fox's video watched a few of his videos and it really starts to make sense about the personal personality disorder because i'm splitting i split my relationship into complete two anyways i am so done with this day and so done with this diagnosis i don't know if i want to talk about this like ever again if i do i guess there'll be a video about it but I don't want to anymore, so I'm done. Bye. All right, we're going to wrap up this day. This long, long day. I have been sitting far too much today. Now my sciatica is hurting on both sides of my hips. But I can't stand. And yeah, I can't really do anything. So my husband bought me one of those yoga balls with the ring underneath it so that I don't fall on the ball. Alexa, turn on Tinkerbell light. Okay. So, as I'm laying down to go to bed, because laying down feels much better than sitting oh, right now. I'm not sure. Oh, shoo. So, 
as I'm laying down to go to bed. Because laying down feels so much better than sitting down. I'm not quite tired, but I do want to talk about something. My first question is, do you believe in magical thinking? Comment below. And two, um, did you happen to watch the long and boring video that we did? Let me talk about the first one. Magical thinking, if you're wondering what that is. Basically, it's saying to your self that such and such is happening because it's meant to be or because it's giving you a sign or it's giving you a message or um, there's an outer force out there trying to help you and guide you or something like that. And in spiritual religion settings, um, this is not uncommon. People feel like angels or spirits or stuff are guiding them. So, or God himself, right? I don't think it makes them delusional. But if you think like aliens are communicating to you, yeah, you might get a, you might get a delusional <laughs> uh, diagnosis. Anyways, what I'm saying is I find it very coincidental, very serendipitous that tonight I happen to edit the video that I needed the most. And here's why I'm saying that. So every night I edit a video, right? I edit a video and I get it ready to post. I have a few edit, I have a few edited videos ready to post up and I post up one video every day. I edit a video every day and I'm pretty much recording every day, which I really need to slow down on those if I'm ever going to get caught up. Anyways, um, so as I'm editing this video, the next video for today, I'm like, oh, I got to edit this one. This is going to be forever. This is going to be boring. Maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't edit it. Maybe we shouldn't use it in the noodle system vlog. Maybe we should do it in the, our private one that nobody ever watches, right? I was thinking, yeah, maybe I should. And I'm like, well, I do think there's some good information in here in case anybody's wanting to know what a neurological psych, neuropsych test is like. Because there's a lot of people out there that don't have access to these testings. They don't have access to um, these type of doctors. Maybe they're curious to know what sort of testing they would do, you know, the variety of testing is done or how they word things or what symptoms they reported or what symptoms, the questions they asked. I think it's important. I don't think, I think if there wasn't this, this information out there, people go into things blindly and they're not feeling as prepared or emotionally ready for triggering things that might come up, right? So anyways, I read my neuro, the neuropsych report from last year, May of last year. Um, I read it the day before our intake appointment. We wanted to have it fresh on our mind. We wanted all the noodles to be present and aware and listen to what we were reading. We wanted to dissect and talk about what we, what we recall, maybe what's different for us now, maybe why we answered that way, maybe why we didn't share as much. You know, like when they asked us about voices in our head last year, we knew that they were asking us about auditory voices that we hear from external places they didn't ask us if we f hear things inside our head, right? So do you ever have conversations with yourself? That would be a good question for them to ask, but they didn't ask that. Anyways, <clears throat> we read it out loud and I think I had three or four videos, maybe even five. I don't remember how many videos there was, but it, like, it basically took up an hour and 40 minutes of video footage, like time, right? Which is like, oh my gosh. So we edited the whole thing which means by editing, I didn't really do much to it. I didn't put a whole lot of rainbows. I didn't put any little Sims people. I didn't put any noodle colors and stuff like that. I did a couple of text notes on the screen. I did a couple of rainbows, but what I mostly did was I chopped out all the stuff that I didn't want public. Um, I chopped out all the stuff that I didn't um, think was really important. Um, like it was just wah, wah, wah. It was like really boring stuff. And I also chopped off a lot of dead spaces in between where I'm just kind of zoning out and just like, wow, I, I left a couple of them in there, but I also, oh, I cut out anytime anybody interrupted me, you know, knocking on the door or saying, Hey mom, or dogs are barking because someone's at the door, stuff like that. So it's a really long video. So an hour and 40 minutes is only cut down to one hour after I got done editing it. So you're welcome. I thought about putting it on hyperspeed, but I'm like, you know what? How about we keep it an hour long? That way it'll deter people who don't want to watch it. They won't watch it. 
who's going to sit through an hour long. If they really want to watch it, they can speed it up if they want, and they can listen to it at their own hyperspeed. If you know how to do that, that's the little button on your on your YouTube thing there. If you didn't know that, you can speed things up just a little bit if you don't like how slow people are talking. And I know sometimes we talk slow, especially when we're in deep thought. Anyway, um, we really think it's serendipitous that this happened to be the video that we had to edit tonight, considering today was the day that we got our new eval results. And I really appreciate the noodle that I was when I was reading this because we kept an open mind. We were really thought provoked. We really were reading it for the first time, it felt like. And we kept an open mind going into our next appointment. We said at the end of that video that we may not have DID or OSDD and we're okay with that. We might have something else entirely as long as they're willing to listen to what we're trying to say, you know, like we're trying to describe the conflict in our head. Okay. Now I get done and saying all of that and there's still a little bit of a conflict, but I think what we've resolved to is we definitely have a plurality, multiplicity. I want to thank the wind chime system for helping us tonight because we did, I, I called out, I did a shout out and asked for anybody who's available on Zoom. I really needed to talk some things through. I asked my therapist if he was available and he wasn't. So yeah, wind chime system was the first to reply. And I also think, um, I don't know if you want me to say your name. There's another girl that um, offered. But anyway, um, Windchime system was super, super helpful and validated the crap out of us and told us that comorbidity, am I saying that right? Comorbidity, it could show up as borderline personality disorder. It could also look like ADHD. It could also look like autism spectrum. It could also look like um, schizophrenia. It could also look like depression. It can also look like um, anxiety, right? My freaking sciatic hurts so bad. Sciatic. Okay. Anyways, um, and we definitely identify with a lot of those, depending on which noodle's fronting. We don't all agree that we have everything everyone's ever diagnosed us with. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Like, thought disorder. Psychosis, I guess that's the same thing. Anyway, she really helped us say that if you look at um, personal, personality, no, no. if you look at dissociative disorders on a spectrum, spe spectrum, one end of the spectrum might be dissociation, depersonalization, derealization, complex PTSD, um, OSDD1A, OSDD1B, DID. You know, you get to these different, um, you get to these different stages, and so if that psychologist, she's a psychologist, a neuropsych, if she can validate the complex PTSD, she can validate the depersonalization, the derealization, she can validate the depression, she can validate the anxiety, and she calls it a cluster A and a cluster B combined personality disorder, but she would not define which ones. How come you're going to, how come you're going to dance around really close to OSDD1A, but when, as soon as we mention OSDD1A, you shut it off like you've never heard of it. I guess it's not in the DSM, so you've never heard of it, right? From my understanding, the DSM has N N. It has OSD, and then people had borrowed the one A and one B from the previous DSM, which was NSO. N N O S, right? Not otherwise specific. One A, not otherwise specific. One B. Anyways, this is going to be a really long video too because you're going to watch a whole day's worth all in one video. I am not chopping it up into different days. I really need to just keep all of the videos from one day into one really long vlog. And if anybody wants to watch it, they're welcome to. But will anybody? I doubt. Are you skipping through? Maybe. Do you give a crap? No. Do I give a crap? Not today. Maybe I will later. But anyways, that's all we wanted to say is we wanted to say thank you to Windchime. We wanted to say, wow, that's pretty serendipitous that we watched an hour and 40 minutes of our our recollection and at the end of that one we said we may be something else and that's perfectly okay but all we know is that our experiences is plurality and multiplicity and that's also what wind chime system said is like you can't take away what we experience lady you may tell us up and down all day that it's not did but at the end of the day it's our experience and i said this in the last video too i said not the last video but the one that i'm talking about the serendipitous one i said if their noodles are helping, I can't shove them back. I can't tell them that they don't exist. 
And I don't want to force them forward either. I'm just going to let all of this fluid stuff come out naturally. And if it doesn't, if we're not, <coughs> if we're not the most authentic system on YouTube that identifies with OSDV1A, then show me one that's, that's also but, or, or better, or I don't care if you're better or not. I want to see another OSDD 1A system, and I want to hear your experiences from an honest, raw, give it to me straight point of view. Because I don't have anything to compare it to. I don't have anybody that has that claims to have what OSDD 1A and has the same symptoms as me. So I can't claim it as OSDD 1A if there I don't have a diagnosis. And you can't claim it as OSDD 1A if you don't have a diagnosis. But we can both say... These symptoms are what we think it is. We identify as plural multiple anyway, whether whether we have a diagnosis or not. Anyways, we're we're done. We're done talking for now. I hope I don't make a video for a couple of days because I really need a chance to catch up on my on my on my videos. I don't want to delete any, and I, don't, I need I need to review them anyway before I decide whether they're going to go up or not. So I still need a chance to review them. Yeah, we'll talk about other stuff another time. But this is all we're going to talk about for now, and we're done with this video. Sorry it was so long. Talk to y'all later.